I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and this is the engine for Barn Sprite number no. 5. I had tore this down in a previous video. This is a 948cc A-Series BMC engine, and today I'm going to put it back together, paint it, and get it ready to be put back in the car. I have behind me the torque specs. This is out of the workshop manual, and there isn't a whole lot of them for this car, but there are three that specifically deal with what we're going to be doing today and that's the cylinder head nuts the main bearing screws and the connecting rod bolts and i did take some of the caps off so first thing i need to do is flip this engine over and let's set, set and check the torques on the main and rod caps make sure that's all good and then i'll start the reassembly process the main caps get set to 60 foot pounds so i'll do that first these take a 5 8 socket and I'll set my torque wrench to 60 foot pounds. For this one I will need a narrower socket because the oil screen is in the way of getting the impact socket on there. Now the rod bolts, those take a 9 16 socket and those get torqued to 35 foot pounds. Now that those are all tight, I'll flip the engine back over. I'm going to insert the tappets in the same order that I took them out. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on them when I put them in. The push rods on this engine will pass through the head so I can insert them now and then put the head on with them in place. With the head gasket on, I can put the head on. Want to make sure that all the push rods are in the right spot. Before I tighten the head down, I'm going to put the water pump on. That way I can put the little hose that goes right here in. There's a little hose that comes out of the bottom of the head and connects onto the water pump. It's a whole lot easier to do if you have the head loose. I am going to use a brand new water pump. I don't know why it's so hard for companies to make gaskets, but often you're going to find that the holes are not the correct size. A lot of times when they're making gaskets, they're basing them off of old gaskets that have shrunk or swollen up over time. So a lot of times you're going to find that you're going to order a brand new gasket and you're still going to have to modify it or do something to make it work. This one doesn't even fit over the locating pins for the water pump. This is the one that actually came with the water pump. I'll open up my kit for the, for the gasket set for the engine, see if that one has a better one in it, see if this one works any better. At least the holes on this one are the right size to go over the pin. So that fits a little bit better. Still not quite right, but a lot closer than the one that actually came with the water pump. There are two different size bolts that hold the water pump on, longer ones that go right here. You can see how much thicker it is right here, and that's where the two long bolts go. And don't worry, this is my less powerful impact gun. This one really doesn't go very tight. Here's the special little hose. If you can see that right there. That's the special little hose that goes between the water pump and the head. It's got kind of this spring loaded section in the middle of it. If you're trying to squeeze a regular length hose in there instead of using this, it's going to be pretty difficult unless you take the head off and do it the way that I'm doing it here. It's just a whole lot easier to put it on doing it this way. Another thing to look for, uh, usually this fitting here coming out of the bottom of the head rusts away, so you want to make sure that that's in good shape before you go putting it back on. I'll tighten this up once I get the head mounted in place. I'm 
Again, this is not a very powerful impact gun, but I'm going to zip these down real quick and then I'll use my torque wrench to do the rest. Now the head bolts only get torqued to 40 foot-pounds and I'm going to first start with 20 foot-pounds. I'm going to do that on all of them starting in the center and working my way out and then I'll work up to 40 foot-pounds. So this one is 20. Now I'm going to set it to 30. I'm going to run back over them just one more time. As you're tightening the outer ones, the inner ones can loosen up slightly. And of course, after the engine's been fired and run for a little bit, you'll need to recheck the head torques anyways. Now I can set this little hose up front where I want it and get it clamped down. Now that the head is mounted on, I can put the tappet covers back on. I did straighten up the tappet covers. These had been squashed in a little bit because uh, this is just a bolt and you can over tighten it. This will squash down and your gasket won't seal very good anymore. The person previously had put all kinds of goop over all these uh, bolts that hold the tappet covers in. So I need to take these over to the wire wheel and clean this stuff off. Now while I'm tightening this up, I'm watching these gaskets. These are the reusable silicone gaskets. And I'm watching to see that they are compressed all the way around. And I'm also watching to make sure that I'm not compressing this too much as well. I'm going to do the valve adjustment after this is all done. And so right now I'm going to use the old valve cover gasket and I'm going to put it on here just for the purposes of painting this engine because I am going to paint it with it all together just like they did at the factory and then I'll take the valve cover back off obviously to adjust the valves and at that point I'll put on the new valve cover gasket because I like the look of everything being painted except for the valve cover gasket. I know that from the factory it probably was painted but obviously if you're servicing your car you will have replaced that and it will look like it's been replaced. So that's just one thing that I like to do. So I'm going to put the old gasket on right now just for the purposes of painting the engine. I'm going to go hit these off the wire wheel real quick, clean these up, and then I'll be ready to bolt the valve cover on. I did media blast the front cover, so I will have to put a new seal in it. The seal comes with the gasket set. It just sits in there and gets pressed in. So I'm going to take this over to the press and press it into the front cover. I have the front cover shimmed pretty flat so that it just sits there. These pieces make up for the height difference there. I've set the seal in there and I'm going to use this big chunk of aluminum to press down the seal in place. There we go. Because these gaskets are so bad, I'm going to hold this up there, make sure it looks like all the holes line up before I create a mess for myself. So I don't know if you saw that, but this gasket does only go one direction. If I flip it over, the holes are not symmetric, so it will not go on this way. So now I know that it must go on this way. And I'm going to actually glue this to the front cover first, let that sit, and then I'll put it on and glue this other side. I don't want this to leak oil at all. Before I do that, I'm going to put this back on just so that I don't forget it. So I have this gasket upside down right now. This is the way that it's going to be mounted to the front cover. But I want to flip it over because I want to glue it to the front cover first. So I'm going to be using Permatex Ultra Black. This is the best for uh, sealing up oil leaks. And I'm going to put a real thin layer of this all around the gasket. I'll just put it on here first and then I'll spread it out once I'm done. It was too hard to film that and do it at the same time, but I hope you can see what I did. I took this and I just kind of smoothed that bead out into a real thin film. Now I'm going to flip this over and glue it to the front cover. Position it so the holes are lined up, at least as best as they can be. These gaskets aren't the best. Then I'll just flip it upside down. It looks pretty good. 
crank pulleys nice and heavy. I'll just put that on there. And I'll let that set up before I mount it to the engine. While I'm waiting on the front cover, I'm going to put the old spark plugs back in. Again, I'm doing that just for painting purposes. That way I don't have to mask this off. I can just paint those old spark plugs and then take them out and throw them away. This spark plug is going in a bit tight, so I'm going to take this to the wire wheel and then try it again. I want to make sure that it's the, the threads on the spark plug and not the threads here before I go any further. The threads are all cleaned up. Let's give this a go again. It looks like it was the threads on the spark plug, so everything is fine. I've glued the gasket for the oil filter as well. I definitely don't want that to leak. There is a crush washer that goes on each side of this oil line. The front cover should be ready to install now. I'm just going to put a bead of sealant along this edge. Now there are two different sized bolts. The bigger bolts go here and there's smaller bolts along here, and there are also two different lengths of the smaller bolts. I put some grease on the crank pulley where the seal is going to hit. I don't want the seal to tear up uh, when it's still dry, and that will also keep the oil from coming out of the seal. I did buy a new locking tab for the crank pulley bolt, this one had been used so much, it was really bent up, starting to tear. So I'm going to put a new one on. Now I'll just take a large screwdriver and bend that up. Now, now that it's bent up a little bit, I can use the punch to press it up against the nut so that that won't come unscrewed. The fan and the pulley for the fan are supposed to be yellow. They should not be green like the rest of the engine. So I'm going to be doing those separately. So I'm not going to be bolting those on right now. Looks like it's time to flip this over and put the oil pan on. I'm going to lay out all the pieces first. I can see by how the holes line up here that I'm actually going to have to trim a little bit off of this edge to get everything to line up properly. This side over here fits pretty good. But you can see on this side that these tabs are just a little bit too long. So I'm going to need to trim those up so that these holes line up in the right spot. If I try to do it this way, this might just leak and it might make it harder to put the oil pan on. I'm just cutting the slightest bit off at a time, checking it, making sure that I do need to take a little bit more off. Now, as you can see, the oil pan has been media blasted. And I have blown out the inside of this and washed it out. You want to be very careful that you're not getting any sand or sand residue dust from inside of here into your engine. So make sure that if you do media blast your pan like this or your valve cover or anything that's going to be around the oil, that you do clean it out real good uh, after you've been media blasting it. So here's an important topic to talk about. These uh, curved cork seals that you put on the front and back of your oil pan you will probably need to trim these you want them sticking out about a quarter of an inch on each side and of course press them in as good as you can when you're doing your measurements and get these trimmed off and then you will also need to put some sealant in the corner here this gasket will actually be laying like that and put sealant all around here to keep these from leaking this is a really important thing to do if you don't want your engine to leak and go ahead and put a generous amount in there, especially if you don't want it to leak. I'm getting four corners of the oil pan started first. That will get all the gaskets lined up. It will also hold the oil pan down to make it easier to get all the rest of them started. Now I believe the torque for these bolts is seven foot pounds, so I'm gonna use my torque wrench. When I got this engine, the thermostat housing was missing, so I need to go in the back and see if I can find one of those. 
I found a thermostat on an old Morris engine I have in a crate back here. Way back over here, got this Morris engine, probably out of a Morris miner, but the thermostat housing is stuck on there. So I brought some persuasion. See if I can get that off of there without breaking it. Looks like that's a no-go for this one. It's just too seized on there and it's gonna take me too much time to get this out of the crate and get some fire on that. I have a couple of these engines sitting over here. This one is missing its thermostat cover already. And so I guess I'll take this one off and put it on the engine I'm working on. I got it off, so now I'll take it over to the media blaster, get this blasted up. Since this is aluminum, I'm going to blast it with glass beads. I would want to not use anything that's harsher than that, or it'll start to really eat into the aluminum. There we go. Nice, clean thermostat housing. I'm going to put in a brand new thermostat. It's always a good idea to replace those. And instead of using the studs, I'm going to replace these with bolts. That way the thermostat never gets stuck on there again. Because when you spin the, the bolt out, it'll automatically clear itself from the aluminum housing there. So if you put in bolts instead of studs, that will work a whole lot better than uh, having your housing get stuck to the studs. Well, that's it for the assembly at the moment. Now I just need to mask off any holes that are left. And I bought some paint from Moss Motors and this will be the correct Sprite Midget Green for this engine. This is black epoxy primer that's been put onto the engine now. The epoxy sticks better than primer and it will also keep any chemical reactions from happening from the materials that might be on the engine and the primer and paint later. The next step is some gray primer and then the green paint right after that once the primer is set up. All right, here it is in the correct green. Once it's dry, I'll get it out of here, get it unmasked. The fan and pulley on the Sprite should be yellow, so I'm actually going to powder coat these, make sure it's really durable. It's not a very good look when you look in the engine bay and the fan is all scratched up. So I'll load up the yellow powder coat and I'll get these done. It only takes about 20 minutes. A cleaned up A-series engine ready to go into a bug-eyed Sprite.